Welcome to the desert. What? In all honesty, I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what that is. At this point, I do not believe I am on Earth. What? I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm, I've never been more confused. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> apparently, apparently, I'm in Nevada. Who knew? I didn't know that was a word until three days ago. <coughs> There's desert dust in my lungs, but it's healthy. That's what they told me. Who are they? Obviously aliens. I have been abducted. I'm on alien terrain. This isn't Earth. This is, these are the options of, what, of what's going on right now. Either I have been abducted and I'm on alien terrain. I, I'm in the Truman Show and all of this is a backdrop. That's not real. Trust me. I'm not going to touch it because I'm not going to, I don't move. I don't move around. I do have a butler and he carries me everywhere I go, but everything is fake. It's all just scenery. You know, it's just a painted wall. You know, none of this is real. Anyways, so having said that, um, reality is nothing. The sun is beating down on me. I can't see a thing. I truly cannot see a thing. I do have, um, cow print sunglasses on that do somewhat protect me. Thank God the aliens do understand the importance of cow print. I do also want to make it clear that the, they are, they're, their cow print. It's not a speckle. That's an important distinction. If anyone looks at my sunglasses and think that it's a black and white speckle or a checkered pattern, um, then I will need to die within the next 20 minutes because it's just, anyways, I can't live with that. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? That was, that was very sexy. You know, Madonna, and then she throws sand in her face and for some reason it's horny. That's what that was. Did I get sand in your eye? I'm sorry. Point is, I've heard rumblings of deserts in my time, okay? And it's always like, oh. <coughs> I just peed a little bit. And it's always about people like drying up like a dehydrated apricot and hallucinating pools of water and you know, collapsing and dying, you know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, um, stop being stupid. Everyone who goes to a desert and dries up, no shade you're stupid because the thing is, look, I'm just trying to save the world. I'm just trying to save lives. Look, we're all here to help the world with uh, the gifts that we've been given, right? And, and, and it's our job to try to figure out how to do that, what we have inside of us, you know, what feels right to what, what's the best way how, that we can help people. That's the meaning of life, right? And philosophers, everyone quit because there's no point anymore, okay? Because I know everything. So um, anyways, I'm just trying to save people from dehydration and hallucinating pools of water. Thusly, bruschetta. What? Okay, this is a cutting board. Okay. 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 Oh, everything is sandy. Oh. Here's what I'll say about the desert. Um, it's mad sandy. I'm gonna venture to guess one of the most important things to know when cooking gourmet food in a desert is just to accept the fact that you will eat um, at least two pounds of sand. From what I hear from my team of doctors, I have many doctors, I have an acupuncturist, um, I have a Reiki master, I have an old man who spends most of his time in an alleyway and calls himself Dr. Locksmith. And he tells me a fair amount of intelligent information about the weird things on my toes. Anyways, to sum up, the old man who lives in the alleyway says that you should eat minimum 20 pounds of sand a year and if you're not, uh, you will die. This is uh, a child size zebra print suitcase. Uh, it is necessary. If you're gonna be um, j basic, mostly just existing, you, 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 do, you do need this specific bag um, or uh, again, you will die. Tomatoes on the vine are the vibe. The tomato quality in this world is absolutely pathetic. Everyone involved in the tomato industry, thank you for trying, you're failing. I think you need to bring a zebra print child size suitcase everywhere you go. Perhaps if you did that, tomatoes would be more red. The point is tomato on the vine, okay? It's the best we can get. If you smell it, yeah, you can smell a garden. It smells a little like pee. That's a little confusing, but... It's important to know what matters and what doesn't. And that comes to cooking in tundra. It also comes to life and death as a whole. Vegetables and fruits smelling like urine is not something to concern yourself with. Urine as a whole, just don't think twice about it. It's, it's no problem. If anyone has an issue with peeing in the shower, I don't like being dramatic and reactionary, you know what I mean? I don't wanna cause like, anyways, distress, but you do deserve to be in jail. Um, if you're not carrying a chef's knife with you everywhere you go, I don't know what to tell you. Now it is smart to have two kinds of knives because you never know. You gotta let the tomatoes speak to you. Don't, don't shout, don't lecture the tomatoes. The tomatoes need to tell you what they need. You need to listen. It's an exercise in listening, Tommy. It's good to have a, a sharp knife and a serrated knife because tomatoes, Often, if, you're, if your regular chef's knife isn't sharp enough, you're gonna masticate those tomatoes and it's gonna be pathetic. These are baguettes. You wanna get the cutest baguettes you can possibly get. 
No shade to Nevada. I respect the sand. I respect the cacti. I respect the fact that this whole entire desert is just a Truman Show scenario and everything is just painted in a backdrop. I, I respect the talent and care and precision that went into this charade. But um, the baguette selection, a little sad. I don't want a squishy squish large boy when I'm looking for a baguette, okay? I will be honest, this smells like very old raisins. I've never smelled a bread that smells like that before. Just a plain white bread that smells like rotten old grapes. I'm not here to judge. Anyways, now the thing is with bruschetta, right? The whole thing about bruschetta is crispy bread. Now, this is what I've heard. I don't know, don't quote me. I'm not smart. I've never claimed to be smart. Don't say that I'm smart, except I'm super smart, except not about most things. I'm very smart when it comes to fun facts about movies between 1998 and 2006, but everything else, I don't know much, but I hear that bruschetta is all about crispy bread and the Americanized version we think of is the tomato salsa on top with the basil and what have you, but a real bruschetta, right? Oh gee, ew, is just crispy bread and with some uh, raw garlic rubbed on it. And that's ba it's basically like classy garlic bread. But the essence of bruschetta is a crispy bread. Now, the thing is, when you are in the desert, there are unfortunately, I mean, scientists are working on it, but there are currently are no ovens. Use what you have, the sun. The sun is your toaster, come on. So slice it up on a bias. The more biased you cut something, the more classy it appears. Even though this bread definitely smells like aging fruit, if you cut it at such an extreme angle, suddenly you fool everyone into thinking it's 75% more fancy than it actually is. And that's what I have to say about biases. Now, I don't know about you, but that's the classiest slice I've ever seen. Angles. You got a little bush? This is the desert equivalent of a tabletop, okay? Precariously, oh, precariously place the bread so it's in direct line of the sunlight and let it toast. Normally, when I do any kind of dicing, I like to be super precise. I like to be very uniform. And that is beautiful. It always has a time and place. I'm not gonna say no in this scenario to a rustic chop. There is a beauty, there is a charm in a bruschetta in a rustic chop. Onion, you want an adorable amount of onion in this scenario, not an overpowering one, just a slight, just a little bit of bite. I'm an onion queen. Okay, they don't call me Shrek for no reason. No one calls me Shrek. I just call myself that in my mind. Um, and I've asked my friends once before and they thought it was stupid. You don't want a rustic chop on the onion, okay? It's gotta be tiny, it's gotta be adorable uh, because a giant bite of onion is of course, say it with me, trash. I've gone through a fair amount of recipe testing with bruschetta because I am a bruschetta connoisseur and I have discovered that this is the most delicious way. You know, some people, uh, you know, they mess with some cheese, uh, different kinds of cheese. Some people do uh, mozzarella, some people do a little Parmesan, some people do a little, get a little zany, a little feta in there, you know, a little goat feta, a little hibbity hobbity, some people mess with a balsamic glaze. Some people mess with a pesto. Some people mess with an arugula pesto. Okay, everyone calm down. And now I'm cheesy. I'm a cheesy girl, both in fromage and the way I express my feelings and emotions. But after thorough, extensive recipe testing, I hate to say it, I know, I know it's gonna cause a rift. I was about to say on the same level as war, World War II. Um, that's probably the most problematic thing I could say. Um, it's gonna cause a rift on the same level as maybe the Cold War. I'm not, I'm, I didn't say it. I heard someone else, someone else, someone over there just yelled that. Anyways, there's no cheese. There's no cheese, okay? I, I, I think the most delicious way to eat bruschetta is this one, and I'm sorry, it involves no cheese. It does involve another dairy product to be revealed momentarily. Anyways, a, an adorable amount of onion, not too much, okay? Normally, normally, I would throw so much garlic in here that you couldn't even breathe when once you've completed it. But there will be garlic, but not at this stage, okay? Pay attention! Okay, oh, lovely. Okay, I have discovered something rather unfortunate. And this is important to know. When you're cooking in the desert, sometimes your herbs, even though you've gotten um, many, many containers of basil, they will, for some reason, shrivel up and die immediately. Um, I assume because of the beating hot sun. Okay, good to know. You know what, I was shading pesto earlier. I will say, it's a lesson learned, okay? Now we all know when you're making bruschetta in the desert, do bring some kind of basil preparation in advance, some kind of herby sauce that has been blended with oils and perhaps a slight lemon juice, a little acid to help preserve the greenness 
and not have whatever happened right here. I'm gonna be honest, the bagel is so sad and terrifying and disgusting that um, I don't think that I can, it makes me wanna throw up to look at it. So we're gonna move on. Um, of course, that is extremely scandalous because the main ingredient in bruschetta is basil and it, has, it should have so much that there's more basil than tomato. It should be basically a basil salad. Oh my God, everything is so sandy. <sighs> it's getting really hard. There's sand in my eyes. There's sand in my belly button. There's sand. There's sand. I literally can't see anything. I, 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 I cannot see a thing. I think at this point in cooking in the desert, the, the important thing to do is just do it because the sooner the bruschetta is done, you can eat it and then you can hopefully leave the sand. Now, the another important thing to know when making bruschetta in the desert, you often won't have a bowl or a spoon and that's to be expected you do get your admittedly rather sandy garbage bag put in your mamma mia papa pia stunning because now it's time to make the uh in essence casual dressing a little bit of balsamic vinegar not too much but a respectable glug tomatoes and balsamic we don't need to go on and on we all get we all get what's going on here okay olive oil an adorable amount salt a good amount tomatoes do need salt take your little knife gently mix it and don't pierce the bag that's definitely the most appetizing bruschetta I've ever seen. Get yourself some butter. Ooh, that's sandy, that's sandy, okay. Good quality butter. Keep it in the little doodad, little doodad boy, right? Salted, high quality, farmer's butter. Don't cheap out on the butter. You can cheap out on some stuff. No, I'm not against cheaping. Butter is not when, it's not a time to cheap. Oh my God, I'm covered in onion juice and sand. And the onion juice <laughs> makes the sand stick to you more. It's fun. Now, take the, oh. Take the garlic, which is of course very sandy. Can't wait to crunch on that sand, yum. It's nice to have an element of crunch in bruschetta and that is what is provided by the sand. Um, and that's why you do need to make this recipe um, in the desert um, and or the beach. Uh, I find though beach sand isn't quite as fine as desert sand and that's why it is worth it to fly to Nevada and or any other place. Ooh, and there's sand. Wow, so much sand on the cutting board. That's nice. That'll, ooh, that'll help break down the garlic um, and that's why you want it. Two cloves of garlic ugh, and you wanna mince it up real fine now. Sometimes it is nice to work a good, good amount of sand into the garlic paste um, just to be sure you are building up your sand quantity for the day. It's just sad how much people are lacking in sand quantity in their diet. So anyways, chop this up. Um, I would suggest chopping up much finer than I did, but the point is, um, just do as I say, not as I do. The point is I'm, I'm reaching a sand level that um, I've never reached before and it's scaring me and um, I need to get out of the sand. So I'm just trying to uh, get this done. Was that a rattlesnake? Okay, we're making a garlic butter. Of course, we don't have bowls or spoons, so it's just a matter of, you know, mashing it in there. These are our baguette pieces that do smell like rotting fruit that have been toasting in the sun. I'll be honest, I'm not gonna lie to you, absolutely nothing has happened to them. But that is not our fault, that is the sun's fault. At any opportunity you possibly can, blame the sun. The sun is not as cool as she thinks she is. And everyone's like, oh, it's so nice to suntan and oh, vitamin D, please, really? I need to stand in starlight for my body to be okay. I also bought parsley because you wanna put parsley in a garlic butter, of course. The parsley also withered into a disgusting blob of nastiness in the desert sun. So, of course, uh, the garlic butter looks sad and pathetic on disgusting raisin bread. Put a good amount of the garlic butter on. You wanna turn every, every single thing you eat into some kind of version of pizza. And that's the only way to exist and chew in this day and age. And it is classy to turn your cutting board um, into a, a presentation board. And that's called um, duality. And that's called synchronicity, New York. And that's called cohesion. And that's called food. Put your little mixture on the bready boys. Now, just imagine if there was actually so many herbs in here that you couldn't even see the tomatoes. Also imagine that the bread was actually toasted. Also imagine that maybe this was filled with 50% less sand and then you're golden. Beautiful. That looks great. Okay, time to munch. The first note you get is sand. The second note is the um, revolting rotten raisin tasting 
baguette. Then it's a lot of butter. Then it's some bald tomato flavor and uh, a little onion. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, you definitely get this crunch from the sand. It's nice. Oh yeah, I could eat all of these up. I won't because I would be impolite to the lizards and the snakes. So I'm going to just chuck this on into a bag and uh, no one's the wiser. Once again, education happens in the most unexpected of places. Um, the desert does not play and she is a cruel tundra of sandiness and or um, herb murders. To sum up, my mouth tastes really bad. The sun is beating down on me like I've never felt before in my entire life. This place is definitely not real. I don't know where I am. I do not know how I'm going to get home at all. Hi, hi. Crucial.